This is life after the coronavirus pandemic and we're trying to go into the new normal. And in the meantime, we've got a very exciting segment. Hold on, Dinuk. Uh, Dinuk went somewhere. Yeah. Dinuk, where are you? No, no, I came. I'm Don't back. go anywhere. Okay. No. This is the, okay, I'm back. <laughs> so we are talking about life after the new. Okay, fuck, sorry. Take it again. <laughs> Okay, uh, standby. This is life after the new, uh, after the coronavirus pandemic, and we have a very special segment brought to you. I think uh, this segment is going to feature all those individuals who's had a significant impact on Sri Lanka and the sport of rugby. And uh, this individual, to start our things off, I think we talked, uh, we spoke to one of, we got our biggest impactful person. I think this individual has had a very considerable impact on Sri Lanka and its rugby culture, especially in the school in the hills, Trinity College Candy. He was one time coach for four years, made a revolution, changed things around. And I think uh, you guys will know who I'm talking about, Mr. Neil Foot. I think an inspirational coach and a motivation for Trinity College. Uh, it's a wonderful time to have you here in our show, Mr. Neil. Uh, how is uh, things going there in San Francisco? Oh, hi guys. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, yeah, we're still in COVID-19 lockdown here in San Francisco, so there's not a lot of rugby to be uh, uh, had at the moment here, but we just, you know, there's a big, bigger picture to life, so we're just dealing with it as we go. So uh, I think a lot of memories uh, with your stay with our coach at uh, Trinity College from 2011 to 2014. A lot of things happened uh, during that uh, four year span as well. A lot of things changed. I think a lot of uh, good memories. Uh, for all of us, and Dinuk Baskaran is all alongside me. Dinuk, uh, just talk us through that 2011 to 2014 uh, stand at Trinity College. I think that was one of the best four years uh, Trinity College has had for the last 10 years. Yeah, I'm still waiting to see another era like that. Uh, in tough, it was one of the best for sure. Um, it was a person who changed the entire thing, and I think uh, Neil would uh, agree with me. He had a fantastic coaching staff as well, uh, Dilip Selvam, uh, Nilufa Ibrahim. Uh, all of them came together after that 2010 season where we had talent but couldn't convert those talents uh, into, uh, into, into victories. And Neil came and just made uh, the picture entirely different. And uh, from there on, it kicked off. And it was just, uh, uh, for me, it was just an autopilot mode after that. Not twenty fourteen, we, we were just, uh, Trinity was just winning games throughout. I think uh, it was a revolution in that four years. Uh, so first of all, uh, uh, Futi, uh, if I would ask, uh, what was uh, the initial call or before we go back uh, and see your call or how you made your way to Sri Lanka, tell us about a little bit of life before coming to Sri Lanka, life in New Zealand. Uh, what were you doing? I think uh, we know that you already had a job at the police force as well. Just talk us through that journey before you came to Sri Lanka. Yeah, I mean, I was still I was still a police officer then in the New Zealand police. So and then I was uh, coaching, I was the assistant coach of a Heartland side. So it was the um, level below the uh, Mitre 10 Cup. So uh, we, we had three years, three years with the Wadded Upper Bush team. And, and then I got the, the call from... Um, Sri Lanka, and then pretty much the rest is history from there. So, how was your reaction when you heard of uh, Sri Lanka first of all? And uh, did you did you think of okay, let me go and see there what what's happening there before I take a decision, or was it like okay, I'm I'm, I'm going out to Sri Lanka? What was your reaction? Uh, well. Rohan uh, Abayakon called me in New Zealand and uh, talked to me about uh, coming to Sri Lanka and uh, coaching a high school rugby team. And uh, to be honest, I didn't. Uh, I thought it was one of my friends uh, playing a bit of a joke on me, and <laughs> I, I was I, I was so naive. I I didn't even realise that they played rugby in Sri Lanka. So you know, like it was it was a bit of a shock to me. You're like. I know Sri Lanka as a cricket nation, so um, mm. yeah. So Rohan spoke to me and he told me that, that there was a school up in the hills, and you know, like they played this big game that was twenty thousand people, and I was 
Oh, for sure, I thought he was just joking around with me. And um, so I agreed to come to Sri Lanka for two months uh, just to have a look and see if they liked me and if I liked it there. And um, I don't think Rohan told anybody else at the scrummage or the school. I think he told them that it was a... Uh, a permanent, <laughs> a, a, a permanent <laughs> decision to come and stay. So, I think when I went back to New Zealand after the two months, I think there was a period of stress for uh, Rohan <laughs> that I was, wasn't going to come back. But uh, you know, like it was just it's just an area of the world I never considered going, and so that was really interesting for me. And when I got there, I was just amazed by. Uh, the country and the people and the, in the school in particular, it just it just blew my mind, and you know I really wanted to uh, experience more of it, which was which made my decision to leave the New Zealand police and um, come to Sri Lanka, and uh, I haven't looked back since I made that decision. Uh, if I would may, I think I remember I was in school at that time, uh, Neil, and I remember a big gentleman. Nobody knew who you were, just walking around the corridors and the quadrangle of school. And then uh, I think everyone there was wondering uh, who this guy was, who was this big lad uh, walking with uh, with a few people around school. Pretty confused face, actually. And then uh, what was your first impression when you came to Trinity College? I think uh, uh, it would have been a different one from uh, where you were when you were in New Zealand and when you just came down, had a session with the boys. What was that reaction like? Yeah, I like my the, the first look around uh, Trinity College, I was in a little bit of amazement just by the sheer number of the, um, the boys at the school because we're not used to that many numbers at a, at a school. And the other thing that um, was really amazing to me was all the monkeys at the school and uh, <laughs> the, the, the monkeys used to come into my bungalow and steal my fruit off my table and, you know, like I was... I was pretty captivated by then, but uh, after a while, I realised they, they were just a bit of a nuisance. So, but I, I remember going down to the quadrangle and, uh, you know, getting to bat while all the boys would have a bowl to me. So uh, it was pretty heavy. And I think the first time that I met the uh, the ruggers uh, was at Askeria. They, they were having a training there, and I rocked over there and so started playing touch rugby with them. And one of the boys was running up the sideline, so. Uh, touch had turned into a bit of tackle by then so you know, here's me I, I went back to my youth and I just smashed him <laughs> much to the, to the delight of all the other boys I think <laughs> you had so much confidence in, in New Zealand cricket isn't it so that you had to stop traffic in, in front of college once can you just tell that story about uh, what happened during yes, that yes. 2011 yep. World Cup <laughs> yep so we had a uh, we had a bet with the with the boys that you know, like whoever lost would do 20, 20 uh, press ups in front of the uh, school on the road. So uh, I was pretty confident about the black caps, and I, I think it was the match where they where they actually tied on the last ball, and then they went to the super over. And I, I remember being in the being in the stand with my New Zealand flag, and you know everybody was going wild, and I was looked down, and there's like just thousands and thousands of people and all, I could see some of our boys down there and so the next morning at school sure enough I went down in front of the uh, little pastry store by the school and the boys stopped the traffic uh, on the uh, on the road and I did my 20 push-ups there. <laughs> uh, so wonderful memories uh, coach so first of all you uh, took up uh, the 2011 team talk us through that uh, how was it uh, you get accustomed to the 2011 you call it and schools rugby is very competitive. How did you fit in just like that? Oh, I mean, uh, I didn't realise how how ferocious that the league would be. Um, you know, so that was quite a that was quite a surprise to me. And I, like, I was quite surprised after the first couple of games. I think St Anthony's was the first game at uh, Palakili, and I, you know, I was quite I was really taken back by. Uh, the support that the team had, but also the, the pressure that came with that support. So, um, you know, that kind of gave me a bit of a bit of a wake up call. But as far as the team went, I didn't want to change them to a New Zealand. I didn't want to change the way they 
play because they were really skillful, really athletic and really keen to learn. And we, we just tried to really build on the culture of the, the team and we really emphasised that. That was probably the biggest thing that we emphasised was, you know, like if we're going to go together a long way on the field, then we have to find that way to be with each other uh, off the field. And because, you know, so many different walks of life for the for the boys at the school and you know there's hindus there's buddhists there's muslims uh tamils you know so everybody comes from uh different paths and we just try to create um just the sense of belonging to each other and belonging to the team and just really created a family and the rugby was just a bonus and the rugby happened because of the way we were off the field Yeah, coach, two things uh, that I was, um, I got to know because I was close to the team at that time was how things inspired to me to get together as a team. One is uh, the paper article of uh, uh, Nilupa Ibrahim uh, before that Kingswood game that fired up the team. And also the other, your introduction to Sri Lanka. Uh, when you were first came in, you were told uh, for you, what you have to do for you to stay for a longer period of time in in Sri Lanka? That was a that was a shocking introduction, isn't it? Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I remember meeting uh, Matis at the um, International Sevens in Colombo on the first couple of days I was there, and everybody talked about uh, Mr. Matis and uh, the St. Peter's team, and you know, and uh, how that they were going to be kind of. Uh, on top of everything again this year and I was like oh that's pretty awesome uh, all the best um, but you know like I was by, by the stage by the time we got to play St. Peter's so I, I was really confident with uh, the players and the, you know one of the things I, I must say about those that group of young men is I, I've never encountered the um, determination or, or, or the commitment anywhere I've been since I left there so yeah, in you know when Chopper came over to coach and, and, and Dustin came over to do some mental uh, mental strength training, I explained to him that I've never met young men that was so inspiring. You know, so um, it, really it was it was myself that did most of the learning there rather than the uh, team. Just uh, I think, Cody, I think we've got. Uh, sorry. Sorry, you know, okay, yeah. you, yeah. you take it on, take it on. Yeah. Just uh, talk us through that, uh, first of all, I want you to talk about uh, the impact of Dilip Selvam and uh, Nilufa Ibrahim in your coaching staff. Uh, two stalwarts, from Candy, one from Trinity, and then uh, the three games, uh, Kuti, the first three games uh, that in 2011, uh, and Anthony's was a 3 nil game, then you went and smashed St. Thomas's uh, 75 points to six. Then again, Kingswood 41 points to nil. And then that was a big shocker down in uh, Mount Seveny again against Science College. Just talk through that how, how and uh, and the impact of the both assistant coaches of yours. Oh, you know, like Nilifa and uh, Silvam, they, you know, like we, we didn't we didn't think of each other as co-coaches or anything like that. We just we just thought of each other as brothers, you know, and uh, they had so much knowledge um, yeah, Nilifa, coaching wise, you know, like he's got an incredible amount of knowledge. Um, you know, and, and the um, the respect that he has throughout Sri Lanka was really important to have him as part of our group. You know, and I, I know that he was always Kingswood in his heart, but when he was at Trinity, you know, he was he, he was all about Trinity. You know, so and and Sylvan, the boys were in the condition that they were because of him uh, and Dan and, and Bobby, Bobby Ayer, you know, so um, lots of people look at me because I'm kind of the, at the front, but it was nothing to do with one person. It was just the, the way that, uh, you know, the, the entire group, um, coaching staff and the management were together um, because, you know, like our goal was to get the best out of the boys. So we had to put them in the, we had to create the best environment and, and we had to make it a relaxing place for them to be when all this outside pressure was, was, was happening for them. So, yeah, and it started off really well. You know, Anthony's was quite a close game and then we went down to um, 
I think it was down to St. Thomas. St. Thomas, was St. Like, Thomas yeah. yeah, 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 down there. So that was that was my first trip to Colombo and um, with the team. And um, yeah, I think it was like 75 nil or something like yeah. that. 75 um, six, it was. Yeah, 75 six. And, you know, and then I, I think people started putting uh, expectations on the boys and then. Then we came to Kingswood, and I think Nalika was coaching them at the time. And um, we just played out of our skins that day, you know. And, and, and obviously, the Nilifa influence because he was playing against his old school, and you know, so he had a big impact on the the, uh, the emotion of the boys. Because we always tried to find uh, just a little trigger or a theme that we'd go through a week, and you know, obviously, um, Nilifa was was that trigger for that week and you know I, I think the science match um because everybody was really raving about our team and how we were going to do they were already talking about yep they're going to win the league they're going to be undefeated first team since 1987 and we're going to do this with the Bradbury and, and I think we kind of got ahead of ourselves and you know that that loss was probably one of the better things that uh, happened to us because it grounded us and one of the things we realized then was being able to be in pressure moments like I think we had a couple of shots of goal at the end of the mount uh, yeah. uh, the science game and you know yeah. and uh, and we just didn't cope with the pressure and you know so that was the uh, yeah but we can't take anything away from the way science were that day they were unbelievable you know they, I think Richie Damapala was there and he's an incredible athlete. I got to coach him at Candy and you know he was probably the, the, the deciding factor about a winning and losing that game because he was inspirational. Mm -hmm. So that record uh, score against St Thomas's is still the highest score Trinity has ever scored against St Thomas's. But uh, coach, let's go back. I think 20, when you speak about 2011 uh, footy, we cannot uh, not speak about the two Bradby Shield encounters, I think one leg uh, completely different to the other. And then in that midweek, I think uh, Trinity lost to Sipatana. I remember we, lost, we missed a few uh, kicks uh, at goal and then we lost Sipatana. But then coming back, uh, fighting strong in that second leg. Just talk us through those two weekends, uh, two weeks actually. Uh, the two weeks where the Bradby Shield was held in Candy and in uh, the Royal Complex. Yeah, I mean... Um, um First league at Bulgumbara, that was my first Bradbury. So I had no idea what was, I had no idea what was about to happen, you know. So I, I was preparing it like, you know, everybody was telling me, oh, it's a really big game, it's really important. But I, I had no idea that it was going to be like that. So, I, like, I was trying to prepare the boys as though it was just another game. Um, you know, and he, even on the morning of uh, the Bradbury, uh, all the old boys were coming to the um, to the school, and they were all coming and talking to the boys while they were getting ready, uh, getting strapped, and getting getting their stretches done at the school. And it was just so distracting, you know. And um, and then the actual match that I was blown away by the occasion. They're, 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 it's one of the best rugby experiences I've had in in my life, being at the Redbury. You know, I could have wish more people could have that um, experience but you know we lost when we lost the boys were just heartbroken because they had all these expectations and you know like we were a really good team um, but we just didn't play to our potential um, I think when we analyzed it a lot of the royal tries came from our mistakes deep in our um, deep in our half you know and, and they were just little mistakes and and so we realised we gave about 23 points away when we analysed it. And in a game, we lost by eight. So, you know, we had to, and the boys were heartbroken. I, I had to just try and tell them one of the big challenges we have to overcome in the next two weeks is just belief because, you know, they were just so confident and they just got destroyed. And, and um, so we really had to get some belief in ourselves that we could do this. Like, I never stopped believing in the boys, but they did that afternoon. So that was a big, big challenge for um, 
that was a big challenge for the team. And, and I knew before the next Bradbury, I was going to take the team away and just hide them from everybody. Um, before we went to uh, Colombo, I took the, I said, talk to the principal and um, I said, look, I'm going to take the boys out to Palakele. We're going to stay there. Um, yeah. And so they, there was no pressure. It was just us bonding as a team. We went down to Colombo and then what happened was truly what we were capable of. Uh, talk me through that moment where you did a haka inside the Royal College tunnel and everybody was looking for you. You were gone missing from the dressing room and the boys walked out and, and you were doing the haka and, and, and the Royal team were just uh, looking at you. What, what was all about? What was that all about? Yeah, I mean, I like as a coach, I don't get to have that uh, emotion, especially out on the field. But it was just supposed to be <laughs> by the uh, mm -hmm. by the boys' changing rooms as they walked out, just to know that I was with them, you know. And, and I, I wanted them to appreciate just I'm not here as a foreigner coaching this school because of what I can get out of it. The school has, in the short time I've been here, this school has already given me more than I could have ever dreamed. Of and I wanted those boys to know me as a New Zealander, as, as a Māori, that is probably the, the highest tribute that I could have paid to that group. Whatever happened in the game, just to know that I was going to be like that before the game and whatever happened, I was going to be like that after the game with them. So it was really, it was really pretty emotional and uh, I know the boys felt that when they went out and you could just see the way when you see film footage of them walking out the tunnel you could just see it in every one of their eyes that there was no way that that was going to stop there was anything that was going to stop them that day the wonderful wonderful scenes from uh, that bread shield uh, by far, I think uh, that is one of the best Bradby Shield comebacks that uh, we've seen for a while. Uh, but uh, coach, then we go fast forward uh, 2012, I think. Uh, but before we go to 2012, uh, the President's Trophy final, that also should be a memorable moment for you. Yeah, it was, uh, it was pretty amazing. Like, um, yeah, I, I think my favorite memories are the matches versus st peter's you know because i as a team i love the way they play rugby uh, you know the, the, the skill the speed you know I, I just love the way that st peter's are geared to play rugby the, the dna they have to play the style of rugby that they have it's just it's beautiful to watch so you know for the fact that i could coach a team that can actually overcome that um that style of play and those that quality of players was really special to me. Um, and obviously the Isi Patana, uh, the, the rivalry and the history between those two teams. And, and, and I think a lot of it comes down to the respect between Isi Patana and, um, and Trinity, which is, which makes that game special as well. And like, I remember before the president's cup final, one of their players, I think it was their prop. He got hit by a train. So, and he was gravely, gravely injured um it was the week of i think it was the week of the president's final so you know like the boys got together and they signed a rugby ball and we met with them uh pre-match and we, we presented them with this rugby ball just to know that as uh trinity and Asipatana, the brotherhood that was there you know like we we see the bigger picture of this person um is, is much more important than whatever happens out on the rugby field so that was quite enjoyable to win that. Uh, coaching, uh, <clears throat> moving on from 2011, I know it was the dream season. I mean, things uh, fell off halfway, but then we picked up ourselves and Trinity just rose from there on. 2012, uh, I remember, uh, Echoes coming out of college was uh, Neil Footy is happy with 2012. He's focusing on the next two years because 2012 was already set. In 2011, the team was there, the squad was there. It was one of the most experienced teams that you had in 2012. Yeah, and I, I think that was one of the one of the changes that we had in 2011. Like there was some boys that didn't make the 2011 
uh, 11 team that were in the 2010 team, you know, because, and I took a bit of grief from the principal about it, and I said, well, you don't understand, it's not about, it's your turn to be in the first 15, this is the best of the best that we have, I've got players that are better than those players, and I, I don't care whether they're uh, 15, 16 years old, they're, they're good enough, so they're going to be in the first 15, and we had a bit of a battle, but I ended up getting my way, and, and out of that came guys like Tari Rakwati, uh, Halak Wadud, um, you know, so, and we kept creating um, a, a succession plan, so those players were coming through rather than lose a whole team and then have to bring a new team together. In 2012, you know, like our team was, it was, um, it was pretty talented that year. You know, and except for a court ruling, we would have won the league for the first time since 1987. So, um, yeah. So 2012 court, I'll go back to that St. Peter's game. We were running on a roller coaster up until that. Uh, what actually happened? Uh, the boys looked, uh, I mean, we lost the game by about four to five points, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it was close. Uh, the boys seem to, yeah, the boys seem to be uh, uh, very pressurized in that situation. And I remember that last try, you just made the switch. You, uh, if I'm not mistaken, you took out Sam and you put uh, uh, Shaheem in, and Princey was switched to flanker from second row, and that's where the under, the era try came from. If I'm not mistaken, right? Uh, that last try. Yep. What happened in that week? If you lead, if you if you uh, talk about that week, uh, I, I, it's always a uh, it's always a battle when you play when you play against quality opposition. You have to do everything right, and that and that's from a coaching perspective as well. You know, like you have to be at your best to beat somebody else that's also at their best. And you know, like it was quite a seesaw game, and. Um, yeah, I remember that change came, and then you know, like it was more my fault than any of the um, players because you know Sam's probably our best defender. <laughs> you know, so uh, I mean, that, that's probably a time where because it was coming down to crunch time. That's probably one of the times where I didn't probably uh, coach or make a decision as well as I should have. So it was it was less of the players' fault than than mine. So and as it turned out that that try or whatever they scored, that was the, you know, like if it had, we had to stop that try, the court case wouldn't have mattered. So, oh. um, yeah, so I'll take that one as a learning experience. <laughs> <laughs> but then, uh, Footy, let's go back to 2013. I think uh, Trinity College didn't have the best of sights, but yet managed to finish third and they took the Bradby home and uh, that was, I think, uh, should be one of their biggest achievements. Uh, it's an average side, I think, Trinity did the wonders. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 by then, it, it didn't really, we didn't need a star team. You know, like, we, we had just developed the culture of the team to such a, to such a degree that it, it, it didn't need star players. But what it, you know, like, so we just, we, we had to be more of a team and we had to play more uh, for each other in the patterns that we played. And and so, yeah, that probably was one of the best uh, best things I did there to be so close in games and come third in the league, win the Bradbury um, with, with that team. So pretty proud uh, of If I may add that. Uh... If I may add, I think uh, Trinity College lost almost all their games in the first half that season and almost then ended up winning the game in the second half. Uh, what was that uh, success story? Uh, I'm not too sure. I think it just got to the stage where, you know, we, we did have our backs against the wall and, you know, sometimes when you're in that position, you've only got one thing to do. It's just sort of, you just got to put your big boy pants on and then uh, get into it. So we didn't win looking for excuses or anything like that. So, you know, the games we lost, we deserve to lose. Um, I think we might have lost to St. Thomas that year as well for the first time. Yes, I yeah. think. 
St. Thomas's were on another level at that year. I think they were not just playing, but they were not playing the league that that season. But then at Havelock Park, I think they had a good play still. Devin Zaysing, and I think that was the yeah, first time yeah, we lost yeah. to St. Thomas. Season. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we did well, and then I think our captain Harlick he got injured for part of the year as well. He mm. he missed the he, he missed the first leg. I think he missed the. Yeah, First that's link. right. And because uh, I remember Harlick spoke to the boys before they ran out uh, onto Palakelly, and he was in tears, you know. And and the whole dressing room was in tears. I was in tears, and you know, like because I said to Harlick, I just want you to tell the boys what it means to be here, what the experience is like out there, and then what it means that you're not there, you know. So, but I didn't realize he was gonna make all of us cry. <laughs> <laughs> Not, not not easy to make footy cry except for that last game uh, <laughs> that you were in tears. Uh, footy that that game that first leg in in Palakkale was a special one. Now uh, just to see so many stars walking around. Jonathan Kaplan officiated that game. Uh, Sir Graham Henry was in the stands. Graham uh, Henry was the guest of honor. Yep. Yeah. So how how was that feeling? You know, for for you it could have been a very proud moment at that time. Yeah, it was pretty cool to have a. Match refereed by Jonathan Kaplan, and then Graham Henry's in the uh, in the stands watching as well. You know, so that that was that was pretty surreal. You know, that little old me comes from New Zealand, and all of a sudden we're coaching on this stage, and you know the boys going quite well as well. So yeah, that was that was a pretty special moment. So and I, I'm pretty sure we lost the second leg. That I and I think that might have been the first. Yes. First, first time yes, we lost we that, that I'd been involved yeah. in losing Bradbury. So I, I wasn't sure how to cope with that second one because we lost the match, but we won the mm. we won the shield. Yeah. And um, because I, I didn't want Royal to have anything, <laughs> I wanted to go through that whole area, and they just got nothing. So um, you know, it wasn't it wasn't out of disrespect or anything, but I just. Yeah. You know, like I knew, I knew what it meant, and I knew how long it had been, and how long mm. Trinity Faithful had to wait before they won it. Mm. And then, you know, like we've got it, we just don't want to give it up to them. So, yeah, so that was that was a pretty strange feeling, but um, happy to, to happy to get the shield and then go to the school the next morning, like we did for all four years, and show all the uh, the youngsters. Uh, the Bradby Shield, so that became quite a tradition. Mm. Knowing Graham Henry, did he uh, did he come and uh, talk to you before the game, or did he give give any advice? Uh, no, not really. But uh, I managed to. Uh, he was up in uh, in the Highlands coaching some uh, kids who had never seen a rugby ball from the tea plantations, <laughs> and so they they asked. Uh, Chopper was here at the same time too, so. They asked Chopper mm. and I if we wanted to go up to the tea plantations and um, catch up with Graham Henry and have a few red wines over lunch. So, of course, we uh, mm. we jumped at the invitation and we went up there. So, I think they thought they were going to make a World Cup team from these kids that had never seen a rugby ball in their life because they had Graham Henry <laughs> coaching. <laughs> I was, oh, we, were quite, we were quite lucky. Because... Sorry, go. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, so we we were extremely uh, lucky because I don't think very many people were speaking English to him up there. So he was quite happy to see two Maori boys walking down the hill towards him. Putty, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we spoke about uh, Nilufa Ibrahim and how he was an influence on the whole coaching thing. I think it was uh, in 2014 when Nilufa Ibrahim went. So he's part of the college, and then Trinity and Isipat are fighting for that league. How was that feeling like? Because uh, you've been with uh, Nilufa, and then uh, you lost Diane as well, if I'm not wrong, to Isipatana. And how was that year going to be turning up? Because Trinity College just came just short. I think I think uh, my player, my friends uh, who played in that team told, told that it was just one try shot at uh, that time against Isipatana. And uh, how was that feeling like? Yeah, it was really strange because it was. You know, like it was, uh, you know, like my little brother was on the other side and usually I'm turning to him to ask him, you know, what he thinks and whatever during the match and here all of a sudden he's on the other on the other bench. But uh, like I was really proud of what 
Nilifer achieved that year with the Isipatana team. I think they won everything that uh, there was to win that year, and you know that his coaching had a lot lot to do with that. So, and, and again, it was an incredible game. Um, it could have gone either way, and you know, like uh, I was hearing lots of our um, playbook calls getting spoken to by the Isipatana boys. So they had the <laughs> same calls that we'd had at Trinity the year before. So. I gave uh, Nilifer a bit of stick about that after the game. Coach, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 2014, one match I will uh, remember because I was in, on commentary in that game and I barely could speak because it was such a tense game. Kingswood match in Bogambara. It was going up and down and finally, yep. uh, I think, uh, Thari's uh, restart and Saranga scored. Uh, it was taken by uh, Rangal or Sam, I'm not mistaken. Uh, I, I, can't, I can't remember who that was. What was your emotion? Yeah, I think it, was Sam. Right? it was Sam. Yeah, it was Sam that got the kickoff. And it, because they had scored just before full time. So, um, you know, to take the lead. So, but, you know, that was just the attitude of the boys. It was just, it was just never so die. And, you know, we were lucky because, um, you know, over the years, you know, like uh, Tari, uh, Shaheem, Sam, you know, like they developed this incredible mental toughness about themselves. You know, like like it, it was amazing to watch and the, the, the way they grew. And, you know, that, that game there, probably if I was playing in it, probably I would have just given it up, I think. But they, you know, had they had one last chance, you know, but they had to get the kickoff and, you know, like, Tati put it on the spot, Sam got it, and then we were away. And we, we, I think we scored and it was the last play of the game. So just an incredible, another incredible moment in, a, in, a, in an incredible era for me. Uh, one one thing I was uh, I saw that day of uh, Putti's other side was a grumpy footy after that game. One reason was because Saranga went across the dry line and he didn't pass the ball. He went to the middle. And as soon as I came down to talk to you, you were like, why did you touch the ball there? He just ran it. Why, why? I was like, okay, Puddy has another side <laughs> of his emotion. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I can still feel it now. I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> but uh, yeah, so, yeah. I, so you're, as a you're coach just, killers just, those ones. Yeah, just to talk about your emotions, uh, Coach. Uh, uh, are you all always calm during halftime chats, or you you get a bit nervous? And you know, how 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 do you work during halftime? Just because most of the times, like Inchaf said before, Trinity uh, during those periods had still a lot of belief going into that second half. So I had to do something with you uh, in that halftime talk. What was it like? Uh yeah, I, I really try and make sure that I'm no matter what's happening, I'm calm, and I give, I just relay facts to them and you know like here's this is the problem here's the solution you know this is all we have to do or or you know like sometimes i don't even have to say anything i, I said you know like and the boys are saying saying the messages that i would say and then they say uh coach have you got anything i says well you've already said everything i wanted to say so it's perfect that it's coming from you so and, and one of the other things is is if things aren't going well and i'm going crazy at half time that's not doing anything for the boys, you know. Uh, that's all that's going to do is 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 make them stressed, and and their decisions become stressful um, stressful solutions, you know. So um, even though sometimes I might be thinking, "Oh my God, what's happening here? What are we going to do?" I, I try not to show that to um, to the players. Like the message always has to be calm and it has to be focused. So yep. This is we're on track. Keep it up. This is what we're doing, you know. So, uh, I'm pretty sure there wasn't many times where I had to show that other side to the boys during the four years, but uh, I'm pretty sure there was <laughs> that happened. <laughs> so, uh, footy. So, one final moment uh, I think every one of us will like for you to savor uh, was the moment when uh, I think. Uh, the second leg of the 2014 Bradby Shield, I think it should be your last Bradby Shield as well. And it was a tough game because uh, at the end of the day, I think it was starting the rough kick in the last few minutes that saw Trinity win that Shield. Yep. And then at the end of the day, uh, 
uh, we saw what you call uh, four captains that in Murad, Khanil, uh, Halik and uh, Tari all to get the moment like because you've coached four years of four Bradby winning teams and four Bradby winning captains coming together in one moment and that would have been a very special moment for you. Yeah, I mean it was pretty cool. I mean Murad, Murad is the in all my time of rugby playing uh, coaching or well, just my involvement with rugby teams I've never seen a captain like Murad um, you know just as a as a man as a as a rugby player as a leader you know he's the most incredible leader that I've seen and in all three of those leaders after him all had little bits of Murad you know so um, but he was he was the epicenter of uh, Trinity's four years um, all the discipline came from Murad, you know, none of the discipline came from me. Like I just used to try and guide the boys if they ever got off the track, but I didn't have to worry about that because Murad wouldn't let that happen. And, you know, I remember when we were having team meals, he would always make sure he was the last person to eat, you know, and it was just, it was inspirational watching him as a leader. And, you know, we try to make sure that all the leaders after him were, were just, continue on the path that he set so it was incredible you know I had some really magical moments that was a uh, that was a pretty cool one that when the four captains were together and at, at my farewell at Trinity I had another photo which was more formal with them and that that was that was pretty cool as well so um it, so many special times like I remember we went into the jungles on the Wednesday before the second leg of the Bradbury in 2011 and half, half the team got lost in the jungles and it was getting dark and I'm thinking oh my god what am I going to tell the principal what am I going to tell all the parents I've lost their kids in the jungle I'm supposed to be playing at Bradbury in three days and but luckily it all ended well we had a good laugh about it and, you know that was another thing that bonded us going down to Colombo. Uh, two lighter moments uh, of footy uh, one is uh, the text messages that you get uh, of the Bradby Shield that you go to collect from uh, the the Royal Complex is one, and two that you almost swam from Dubai to New Zealand because one of the players were just floating on the sea. <laughs> yeah, I, there is a there is a saying that lions should be never anywhere near water, and uh, that's that's very <laughs> true. We. I had this. I had this really. When we had the tour of Dubai, I had this really good idea to take the boys down to the beach and get some recovery into them after a game. And you know, so they're there. And we kept telling the boys, "All right, don't go in too deep because the waves are quite big." And you know, but sure enough, yep, they go in, and then uh, Bazu and Shaheem get swept away out into the current. And I'm like, oh, oh. So I swam, <laughs> swam out to. Uh, I couldn't grab both of them, and but. Bazu was Not all right. Bazu, he had a bit more sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He had a bit more buoyancy than uh, Shaheem, and he was more <laughs> relaxed about it. You know, like he was just floating away. And luckily, there were some surfers out in the bay, and they grabbed Bazu and uh, Basu, and, and then so I grabbed Shaheem, and we started just swimming. And he was panicking, and <laughs> and I was like, Shaheem, you got to kick, you got to kick, otherwise we're not going to make it. <laughs> and so uh, you know, like he was quite panicked and. We were pretty relieved to get back to the shore, that's for sure, because uh, if, if something had happened, I would have just kept swimming to New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs> and about that text It's all part of those. Uh, oh, yeah, it's so, you know, like, obviously you get tons of messages about support. Um, you know, like even from, yeah, like some of my better friends are some of the, the royal people that I've met over the years. And, you know, like, occasionally there's the I don't know how they get my phone number but occasionally you get the uh, not so nice text messages and I you know just keep getting this same person texting me and texting me and doing this and doing that and like so apparently it's not just a friendly yeah. rivalry sometimes mm -hmm. but yeah no, so uh, every, yeah another emotional uh, day for me pretty was that last day the st peter's game against uh, against uh, trinity at public la was your last game at home and how special was was it for you uh, the boys doing the riona mano to you back uh, something that you brought in uh, to, to trinity college and how special was that for you to, to be on that receiving and and for, for the boys to do that in front of that uh, shield yeah, I mean it was it was pretty incredible. Um, 
you know, just my culture, that's really about uh, honour. Like most people think that's a challenge, but it's really used as an honour. So, you know, to have the boys um, do that haka for me after the St. Peter's game, because that last year was, I knew I was leaving, you know, so everything that happened that last year, I knew at some stage, you know, this is the last time here, this is the last game at Palakili, this is the last training, this is the last Bradbury. So, you know, like it was actually ended up quite an emotional year because I, I really felt uh, beloved by all the Trinity people. And, you know, like it was really special. It was hard, it was really hard for me to leave, but um, I, I just felt like for me to grow further, I, I had to leave and I knew, um, like I knew that Trinity would carry on all of those traditions and stuff once I'd left as well. So, yeah, but when I when the boys did that haka for me, you know, especially because that was the first time that that trophy had been played for. Uh, uh, Pereira trophy, is it? Was it the Pereira trophy? Yeah, I'm not sure about Colonel. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think it's the Pereira trophy. Yeah. But that was the first time that that, that had been played for in... Obviously, St. Peter's was really special for me, you know, because we'd had a tradition of losing to each other on our home fields um, yeah. the, almost the entire time that I'd been there. So, you know, and that was a really close game again. Mm. So the whole day was pretty special. Let's take back uh, a step from Trinity uh, Footy. You uh, went to Candy Sports Club in 2013. Um, it was not uh, a great experience for you in terms of all the glory that you had at Trinity in 2013. Uh, you uh, you had to step back halfway through. What happened there? Uh, I mean, uh, like I, I, I love my experience with uh, Candy Sports Club. The, the players were amazing, and it was really one of the cool things for me was to um, meet. A lot of those players that had played against uh, Trinity over the years, and they were now, you know, young men in the real world and, and playing for Kenny Sports. So, so I really loved it, and I was coaching there with age. And then, kind of halfway through the season, we'd, we'd had a loss to Navy at um, the Tabella, and and then, and so they just the management decided that. You know, like they were going to go forward with age as the coach, or such. You know, like they were the person, they were the people paying me. So, you know, that, <laughs> that happens in rugby in some places. So, um, it's just freed me up to return back to Trinity earlier than I was expecting. But uh, you know, like I, I loved it there. The, 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 the fans were just incredibly, they were, they were incredibly supportive, and you know, so they were the, your biggest. Uh, praises, but your uh, harshest critics at the same time. But you know, there's some incredible, incredible players there, and um, you know, seeing Fazel, uh, he he's a pretty amazing rugby player, and then we had Sean there as well, and um, you know, like that whole team littered with um, Sri Lankan internationals. You know, but sometimes the the environment. Uh, when it comes to different pressures and kind of the way things get refereed or, or, or whatever, it's sometimes a little bit um, puzzling to say the least, you know. So, um, but overall, like, I'm really glad that I went to Candy Sports Club and I'm glad that's part of my journey as well. So, it's been a wonderful four years, Footy, but if I put you on the spot and if you could answer this, uh, if there was one player that stood out in your coaching career as one player that could do it day in day out who would that player be yeah, probably the the most amazing player i came across there was Carnil. um just just for his mental mental toughness I've, I've never seen anything like it you know like morad was this inspirational leader and you know we've had players like sean foster which was the soul of the team and you know tari who became an absolute star, and Rehan Wirakon, all those players, but Carnell stands out to me as the, just, he was just so incredibly strong, 
you know, and he, he, he was really humble with it, you know, so that to have, to be around somebody that was so strong yet so humble was, was pretty special to be a part of that. Anil Seniratna, of course, the captain of Trinity College in 2012, currently in the United States. But uh, also, uh, Fudi, let's go to the lighter side of things. I think uh, you've been a very uh, known figure in the Candy City uh, for your time uh, during that, those four years. And uh, with your scooter that you didn't have uh, a revenue license filled, uh, talk us through those uh, fun times. I think uh, you had quite a bit of uh, fun uh, during your stay. I think uh, one specific yeah. video, I think I found this on your profile as well, of you jumping uh, from on top of the roof from our swimming pool, from the Trinity College swimming pool, I think jumping uh, from about uh, 35 to 40 feet high. What yep. was that all about? Yeah. Oh, I I just, that's just a uh, product of a misspent youth when I was young in New Zealand. So we used to find cliffs to jump off into rivers. And then I saw, when I got to the pool, I saw how close the pool was to the, the building. And then the building was three stories high. So I thought, that's a perfect cliff. So the boys showed me the way to uh, climb up to the top. And uh, yeah, then we, there was one day that I made about five or six of them go off the top. So, um, <laughs> But then we started getting in trouble because... I think one of the junior school headmaster lived in the uh, yeah, that bungalow. Was the headmaster's house. Yes, so the headmaster's <laughs> house is right there. So all of a sudden, he sees these people going flying past his window on the on the third story into the swimming pool. So we got told off about that and told not to do it again. So <laughs> and the the scooter, yeah, we had some good times on the scooter. Um, the boys used to when we used to have camps and that. Obviously, the scooter was parked parked up while we were having camps at Palakili and usually Bazoo would be the one that would grab it and then do skid off into the uh, hills around the stadium so he'd usually come off that a few times and I remember one time we were playing cricket just down the road and he came sliding in on the scooter and fell off and in, in the middle of our cricket game so if there was any mischief to be had it would be usually from Bazoo so <laughs> I think uh, Baz is actually a really jovial character. But then, uh, Coach, I think you brought in that different kind of player. I think uh, these words, I think this word was used by you quite a lot. Eka Paula, what was this all about? Uh, you were more than a coach to many of these players. Uh, in your, even at your residence in this college quarters, to what I recollect from the players, you've been more than a coach figure, more of a mentor kind of figure. And talk us through, what was this whole concept about? Yeah, we just really wanted to emphasise family. So uh, Ekapola was, you know, like that was all we needed to. That was all we needed to say, and everybody knew exactly what what we were talking about. You know, so um, I remember when the I was in the bungalow by the uh, chapel, and the boys were cutting class, and you know they'd usually come, and I'd be watching television, and so the boys would cut class and then sneak up to my bungalow and they'd be, all be in there and going through the refrigerator and through the fruit bowl and um, but then it got so many players cutting class and coming to the to the bungalow I had to because they all put their shoes outside of the bungalow and and so there's there's like 15 pairs of shoes black shoes outside my door I had to get the boys to hide them because I was going to get in trouble because they're cutting class and they're hanging out in my bungalow, raiding my refrigerator, watching TV, and when they should be at school. Coach, you seem to have had a superb journey in, in Sri Lanka. Just to uh, uh, wrap it up, if there is an offer again to come back, will you take it? Uh, obviously, never say never, but um, you know, like I'm really enjoying what I'm doing at the moment and here in America, and um, so got pretty settled life here in uh, in America so and I'm really enjoying what I'm doing over here so I'd love to come back to Sri Lanka at some stage and you know just even if it's just a visit and see all of my friends from all over the country again so you know all it's going to take is, a, is an invite to come back to a Bradbury and I'm sure that uh, the current coach uh, Rodney he's going to have some success some really good success with the boys um, you know like he's you know, like such a good coach, but more than that, he's a really good person. And I think that's the that's the first part you have to sort out. You you have to be the person 
you know, that can relate to the players, not just come in and be a coach because, uh, you know, X's and O's and, you know, playbooks and patterns, they don't mean, the boys don't remember that stuff when they leave that team. They remember that the times that you had together and the, you know, the advice you gave or, you know, like, I felt really special that some of the boys really looked at me as a father figure because they didn't have fathers in their lives for whatever reason. So, you know, like I felt quite uh, honoured that they would think of me in that way. And, you know, like I thought of them as sons as well. So, um, yeah, never say never, but um, I'm pretty settled here in America at the moment. <laughs> I think uh, Trinity Dose will never shut for Neil Foot here. That, that's how much Trinity, Trinity loves you and you love Trinity. So maybe one day you'll, you'll cross roads again on your way back to New Zealand. Yeah, I really hope so. I really hope so. All right, uh, Futi, I think it's been a wonderful time uh, talking to you. I think a lot of uh, fond memories uh, discussed in this last hour we've uh, spoken to you. We've uh, had a lot of uh, discussion, a lot of, uh, lot of uh, look back, a lot of fond memories. And I think uh, thank you so much for joining us. And we hope uh, all the best to you in your future endeavors. I think uh, you had a great thing, uh, getting a great thing going on at San Francisco. And hopefully you continue to do the same that you did here at Trinity College, here in Sri Lanka, in there as well. Thanks, guys. It's been a pleasure. You know, like I, I, I've loved every second of my time in, in Sri Lanka, and I think one of the beauties of social media now is on my Facebook feed when my memories pop up every day. There's memories of Trinity and some of the things that we did in, in Sri Lanka. So I, I'm really grateful for the time and the experiences that I had in Sri Lanka. So. All right. Yeah. Good. Uh, Footy, one more thing, uh, we need to uh, shoot a really small, uh, what do you call a promo kind of thing so that we can run this and then run this. So uh, yeah. basically this is what will happen. I'll just give an introduction and then Dinuk will give an introduction uh, to you and then we'll have a small chat on uh, what we're going to, Dinuk can give a 